Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I wear my newborn and some of the kind of carrier options that I prefer. Keeping in mind that I'm somebody who runs pretty hot, so I definitely have been favoring carriers right now in the summer that are more lightweight and breathable, and will probably transition in some of the heavier duty, warmer carriers as it gets colder. I also really like to use lighter weight carriers just because they tend to fold up a little bit more compactly and then they're just a little bit easier to fit in my diaper bag. So the first type of carrier that I wanted to talk about is like a stretchy wrap. I do have a Moby wrap and a lot of people are most familiar with that. I also have a Solly wrap here and a tuck and bundle wrap. These are super lightweight modal type fabrics. They are very, very thin, so very different from a Moby wrap that way. They don't run hot. I don't know if you can see that. They're like almost sheer. These have been probably my most used carriers. They're different brands, but I found them to be pretty much identical in terms of overall comfort and just kind of how they wear. They're basically just super long pieces of fabric and you tie them up. So I'm gonna start the tuck and bundle pretty high, almost at like my bust line, I'm even just a little bit below, just because she is pretty small and I want her to be nice and high. So you can see here the tag is in that spot and now I'm gonna make sure that again, it's not twisted across my back. And I'm gonna have these two tails basically. I'm gonna grab the ends and I'm gonna stuff it underneath this panel. Once I've done that, I'm gonna now cross it and tie it. You can either tie it in the back or you can bring it around one more time and tie it in the middle or tie it on the side. I like to tie it on the side just so that it's a little bit out of the way. And then I'm ready to go. The one thing I will say, especially with a baby this small, is just tie it a little bit tighter the first time than you would think, just because it will kind of stretch out a little bit and they don't need a lot of room. Now you've got your baby. So this is Olive. She is three weeks old and about nine pounds. And the only thing that's really important here is that you want to start with the panel that's closer to your body. When you created the cross, one of them is closer and one of them is farther away. So this is on top. This is the underneath panel. So I'm going to put her first leg underneath that panel and I'm going to get it to the back of her knee and I'm going to spread it kind of across her back while supporting her with my other hand. Then I'm gonna kind of froggy leg her other leg and pull it underneath the other panel and do the same thing. Spread it across her back. And now that she's in this position, we'll take the final panel and bring it up over her back. So I'm gonna kind of pull her legs up, find the tag and pull it up over both of us. And as you can see, there she is. So when she was actually like a week old, Typically I would take one of these panels and kind of lay her head down for support, but she's kind of already getting to the point where she sort of prefers to have her head not covered up like that. But when she falls asleep, that's what I do. And for her bottom feet here, as a newborn, you can kind of keep that overall panel with the tag on it and you can kind of just cover her feet and tuck them in like that. Otherwise, we'll do that as well. And her knees are supported from those initial two crosses that we made, so the feet can be out like this or they can be tucked in, kind of depending on your baby's preference. But that is how I wear um, my newborn in a stretchy wrap. And once she kind of starts to fall asleep like that, that's when I will take the panel and kind of just lightly support her head. And that way, because she still has sort of, not the best neck support, she'll have just something as an extra bit of protection. Taking the baby out of the wrap is just basically the same process, but backwards. I take the back panel, pull it down underneath their butt, and if their feet were pulled out, then I also take those. And then working in reverse, I take the panel that we put on second, take that one off first, and then take the first one off. And then I can kind of hold her like this and pull her out. And now she's out of the carrier. In case anyone's curious on how to do the Sully wrap, it's the same process. I'll just show that as well. The next carrier that I want to show you guys is in my fuel cell here. This is a happy baby carrier and I have found that it is just kind of the perfect size to put right in here. If you're not familiar with happy baby, this is a soft structured carrier. It's worn apron style though, which is its main difference. It's much thinner than like a Tula or a Lily Baby. As you can see, it fit into that fuel cell really well. And by apron style carrier, I just mean that rather than putting it on 
facing you like you would a Tula or a little baby or a different soft structured carrier, you actually put it with the tag facing out and you can adjust sort of where you're gonna be putting it. Now, because all of again is a newborn, I'm gonna start by putting it pretty much right underneath my bust line. Now, also what I have done in the past is I will roll it once and I think I actually will do that now. That's just gonna create this panel to be a little bit shorter and that way her head's not gonna be covered and her airway won't be covered underneath the carrier. So now that I have the carrier like this, I'm gonna take all of again. This does have a cinching option, but because she's so little, she's gonna have it, I'm gonna wear it with the full width of the panel and I'm gonna have her go froggy leg style. So I kind of let her just sort of relax a little bit making sure that her feet are in that froggy position, her bum is below her knees. And then I'm gonna take the panel, I'm gonna bring it up over her back. And I'm gonna slide while supporting her with my left arm. I'm gonna slide my right shoulder pad on, holding her with my right hand, slide the other shoulder pad on. And then I actually like to keep these pretty loose right away. So in order to reach the back panel, in order to buckle it, I actually have my arm straps pretty loose and because she's supported in the carrier, there's no issue with letting her kind of fall forward a little bit. And then I can go ahead and reach these and buckle. Once that's buckled, I reach behind and I pull it down just a little bit so that it's more on the lower part of my shoulder blades. And then I can take the arm straps and tighten them up. And that is how she is in the Happy Baby Carrier. And you can see now why I had, why I rolled this one more time, just because otherwise this panel ends up being kind of covering her head and I don't want that to be. I want her airway to be clear so that she obviously can breathe. I want her close enough to be able to kiss her. And she's got that nice arch. And if you need to, you can kind of reach in and find their bottom and sort of center them if they're not centered already. And then this does have a hood. There's a nice little zipper right here, sort of concealed, which has a pocket. Which is where the hood goes. You can hook the hood to this little clip here. This clip is also really nice because it's where you can attach like a little bag if you need to, or if you wanna put like the strap of your diaper bag. But that way, like if we're out and I wanna have her head covered just so she doesn't get too much sun or whatever, I can do that. And honestly, because she's so little right now, it's I, I typically just sort of drape it across her. Just if we're outside, I don't want her to get sunburnt. But that's what a newborn looks like in a soft structured carrier, specifically the Happy Baby Carrier. This has been one of my favorites, just because again, it's super lightweight. I don't get really hot. And because the waistband's not digging across right here, I find that it's a little more flattering, but also it's pretty comfortable to sit down because it's not fighting with my waistband of like my pants or anything because it's nice and high up. As you can see, she really likes it. She never even woke up during that. But she has slept in this for a couple of hours when we're outside and everything. It's just been really nice to have this. Getting her out is again like the Solly wrap. It's sort of the same process, but just backwards. So I start by supporting her and sort of slowly loosening the armbands, the armbands, loosening the arm straps there. And then I sort of let her fall forward just a little bit. And while supporting her then with my one arm, I can reach behind and pretty easily unbuckle this. Now that that's unbuckled, I can take one strap off at a time, reach in and hold her against me, and then let the carrier fall. And that's how I get her out. The last way I like to carry Olive is with a ring sling. So I have this one here, this one's from Wild Bird. I also have this one from Lenny Lamb. This one's super soft and I really like this one. And I also have this Techni Wovens one. This is the Sensible Mama collab. I absolutely love this ring sling. I have one more that I'm borrowing to a friend from Techni Wovens. These are fantastic ring slings. But for the summer, I've been using my Wild Bird just because it is super lightweight and a little bit easier to fit in my diaper bag. It's a shorter length ring sling and the linen is just a little bit lighter. So again, in the really hot temperatures, this is kind of what I've been reaching for. So I have it threaded, but I'm gonna go ahead and unthread it just to show you guys that it's a pretty simple thing to do. 
You can choose whatever side you want to have them on. People tend to prefer putting this, the rings on their dominant side just because they tend to have a little more mobility then. So I've got the rings pulled around. I'm resting on my shoulder like this. And then I'm going to take the top rail. If you hear the word rails, it's just referring to the groupings of the fabric. So the top third basically is your top rail, middle third is your middle rail, bottom is your bottom rail. So with the rings resting here, I'm going to take the fabric, find the tail, and then I'm just going to kind of bunch it up. You can kind of fan it together. And then bring it underneath the first set of rings. So it's underneath both rings right now. And then I'm going to bring it back through the top ring and under the bottom ring. In order to make your sling easier to adjust, it's important to keep your rails all together. Meaning, you don't want this to be bunched up. It can pretty easily end up with your top rail and your bottom rail getting mixed up. Basically, you want the top part up here to maintain its position throughout the entire length of the fabric. So the easiest way to do that after you've threaded your sling is to bloom it, meaning that you find your bottom piece here and pull this all through so that it's not bunched up, that it's not twisted. And then you can find the seam on both sides. So you have your top and your bottom rail. And then I kind of just grab the bottom and top rails here and pull them through so that they're not twisted. And now, because again, Olive is not a big baby, I'm gonna tighten this quite a bit, leave enough room for her. So now that I've created kind of like a little pouch, I'm gonna get Olive. She's being a little champ with all these transfers. I'm gonna put her up high on my left shoulder because I have my rings on my right shoulder. And I'm gonna keep her feet in again just because that's kind of naturally what she wants to do. I'm just gonna kind of hold her feet and her butt together. Grab the top part of the sling, and kind of slowly bring her through. I'm gonna reach underneath and kind of grab her, her feet and her bottom together and kind of help to sort of slowly bring her down so that the bottom of the bottom rail is still creating a seat for her. So I'm gonna kind of pull that up between us, this fabric. <laughs> and then I'm gonna kind of work this excess fabric across so that she's nice and tight in here. And then in order to get rid of that slack, pull sort of as I go down the slant ring, pull down the fabric and finally end up on the bottom rail. She's stitching out now because I picked her up. So now that she's in here, I want to kind of make sure the sling is not twisted or anything. I have a little bit of slack here so I can kind of bring that through and then tighten it here. And then for newborns, you can kind of bring that top rail and sort of help support their head. You take the tail of your ring sling and twist it. And kind of bring that across, sort of as like an extra little bit of support. And tuck it in there. And again, her bottom is here underneath her knees. She has a nice deep seat. She's tight. Her airway is clear. I can kiss her. She's obviously very comfy. <laughs> and that is how I wear my newborn in a ring sling. Getting her out of the ring sling is going to be the same process, but backwards. So now that I have the tail free, you can sort of support your baby to take the, the, the weight off of the rings because that's what's sort of locking it into place is her weight. So I'm going to kind of support her with my left arm. I'm going to pull the top ring up and it'll really easily loosen plenty of fabric so that I can get her out easily. So I'm going to support her head and back. And I'm going to pull this fabric kind of down and then get her up and out. So right now those are sort of my favorite ways of carrying Olive, being that she's my third and I've been having to kind of stay busy with my other two kids. Baby wearing has become a an absolute necessity on top of being a passion and a love already. So I really, really enjoy doing it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave them down below and I will do my best to answer them. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.